Chances are, if you're paying for ChatGPT or another chatbot service, you're paying too much money. So in this video, we're going to discuss how you can save money, but also why you should avoid a lot of these third-party apps. This video will cover macOS, Windows, and Linux, and also talk briefly about mobile applications as well. I've placed chapters in this video so you can skip around to the parts that are relevant to you. On <laughs> the very off chance you haven't heard, ChatGPT is a large language model using linear algebra that's essentially a very robust version of the predictive text that you've had on your smartphone for years. No, I'm actually being serious. That is true. The most common way people run ChatGPT is through a web browser, but there are a lot of desktop clients out there as it's such a useful utility. The web version of ChatGPT offers a free tier and a paid tier. ChatGPT Plus costs $20 a month, which isn't cheap, but it gives you faster responses and access to GPT-4, which is the latest version of ChatGPT. But you really don't have to pay that $20 a month. We'll come back to that in a second. I don't want to spend too much time on this topic, but ChatGPT-4 provides more coherent and accurate answers over ChatGPT-3.5 and is less prone to what OpenAI describes as hallucinations, which is a euphemism for making up stuff. Now let's get back to that thread about saving you money on ChatGPT. What makes these clients or applications more interesting is their ability to use an API key. The application itself uses ChatGPT's API, an application programming interface, to make API calls for responses to the ChatGPT prompts. For 99% of users, this is going to be a lot cheaper than the $20 a month subscription. Let's explain how. ChatGPT's money-making angle is that it is a service, and while $20 a month subscriptions generate the money, the real money is allowing third-party developers to access the API to create new services based on ChatGPT. A developer can sign up for an OpenAI account and then integrate the API to get responses from the ChatGPT algorithm. The way most of these services work, OpenAI included, is a developer pays for how much of the service they consume. Instead of developing your own custom application to use tokens, what you're using is a client to use tokens. We will talk about clients in a minute, but let's first talk about the pricing. OpenAI charges by tokens, which are a measurement they use for the cost of generating words. So you're looking at about 0.2 cents for 750 words, or 3 to 6 cents for 750 words in ChatGPT4. To put this all into perspective, you would need to generate nearly 7.5 million words, give or take, in ChatGPT 3.5 in a single month to equal $20, or about 250k to 500,000 words using GPT-4 models. This means even with the 32k context in GPT-4 with its higher prices, 250,000 words is still longer than Moby Dick, which comes in at 720 pages or 209,000 words. Even the most chatty users are probably not even coming close to this. Okay, so now we understand that it's cheap. Now a quick word about all the ChatGPT clients out there. Some of them are not good. They will charge you money for something you shouldn't be paying for, or better worded, you shouldn't be paying the application author for. What these application developers are doing is charging users a flat rate, knowing that users will never come close to using as much as it costs them to provide the service. In the best light, they're providing you a UI that is clean and easy to use, but in reality, you can get pretty much the same service and only pay as much as you use. As a general rule, do not get applications that have a monthly subscription fee for ChatGPT. Look for applications that will let you use your own API key. I do want to be clear, I'm sure that many of these applications with subscription fees do work, it's just that you're vastly overpaying. If you have a preference for a certain client, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and have a list of ones that are reputable in the description of this video. For this video, I'm going to use NoFWL as it's an open source project and available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. From my experience, setting up any ChatGPT client is very similar to setting up NoFWL. Even if you're not using NoFWL, skip ahead to the API key section. Let's proceed with NoFWL as a ChatGPT client. 
Just go to the GitHub website and you'll download it here. A note to Mac users, you'll need to download the correct version for Intel or Apple Silicon Mac. Apple Silicon Mac users will need to download the ARCH64 version. Intel Mac users will need to download the x86-64 version. Due to Mac OS's security features, you may need to right-click Open the first time you launch this application. Windows users will need to download the MSI file. If you're using a modern browser like Edge, it will probably give you a security warning. You'll need to right-click Keep, and then you'll have to step through yet again, Show More, then click Keep Anyway. Then finally, when Windows Defender comes up, you're going to click More Info and Run Anyway. This is because this application is unsigned and thus does not have a vendor attached to it. It's not because this is a nefarious application. When you first launch the application, it'll launch to the GPT settings, where you have the chat avatar, the API key, and the model, and the context level. The avatar doesn't matter, so I decided to use something that represents how I feel when I use ChatGPT. Brick from Anchorman. What makes this of particular interest is that it uses the API key and you can specify which model. And this is true of any ChatGPT client that supports the API key. Personally, I use for my Mac, MacGPT, as I like how it docks into the top of the Mac. On Windows, EasyChat AI offers a great experience as well. It's time to take a bit of a detour, and I promise this is important. Let's step through the process of signing up for an API account. First, you need an OpenAI account. If you've signed up for ChatGPT already, you have one. Otherwise, you'll need to sign up for one, and they support multiple service logins. The other thing you'll need is a working credit card. So first, you need to go to your platform.openai account. The easiest way to get to this is just to scroll down and click About API Key, and click Get Your API Key from OpenAI. Or you can even Google... Where do I find my secret API key? Select the OpenAI link from the search results and then click User Settings. Once here, we want to go to our billing and go to Payment Methods and we'll add in our credit card. After that, we're going to set up our usage limits and this is good because that way if for some reason we're using AutoGPT or something else, we will not run ourselves broke. I suggest setting your hard limit pretty low, something like $10 a month, and a soft limit of maybe half that, like $5. The soft limit only lets you know when you're approaching your hard limit. The dashboard also lets you monitor your usage. You can click on usage and see how much data you've used. This will be blank if you're new to this. The usage panel is pretty useful, as you can also monitor how much you're spending a day. Now it's time to generate an API key, and as you may have guessed, click API keys, and then from this screen, you're going to click Create New Secret Key. I suggest naming it something that'll make sense because we're going to be using the client no FWL. let's use that. Now once you create the secret key, you won't be able to view it again. It even warns you about this in the control panel here. For our use case, this is not a big deal because if you ever lose it, you can just trash it and generate a new API key. So copy and paste it into your GPT settings in your application. The context level is a little tricky. If you scroll down, it tells you what the context level is. I recommend placing this above zero. I just operate at 25 while using this application as it will give us some memory of what we've previously said in our chats. Now we can finally click save and we're ready to use this application. I just want you to know this is under active development. So these two buttons down here don't do anything, but maybe they will by the time you watch this video. Now we're finally ready to use ChatGPT to win arguments on the internet to get those sweet, sweet, sweet updates. There are many other ChatGPT clients available for your computer and phone, and many allow you to use the API key. So the process is very similar to setting up this application. For iOS, I recommend the client GPT. If you know of an application that lets you use an API key in Android, please let everyone know in the comments. Thanks.